just a few short weeks ago, the Amsterdam football team did not look like a title contender in Class A. 0-3 to start the season, the Rams then saw 13 players leave the program for various reasons. Veteran head coach Doug Edick knew better than to panic. Having spent more than a decade with the team, the last four as head coach, he rallied the troops, made a couple of changes, and what do you know, seven straight wins. Now the rugged Rams have a shot at something that's never been done before, a third state title in program history. And joining us now in studio, head coach of the Rugged Rams, Doug Edick. Thanks so much for being here. Glad to be here, Brittany. Well, let's take it back a little bit. Your team started off the season 0-3. That third loss against Troy. Take me back to the locker room that night. What was the mood in the locker room? Well, we were a little disappointed, um, but we played a better second half than we did when we the first half. And they came out and we said, "We well, listen, let's not worry about who we're playing next week. Let's just get better every day at practice and just worry about Amsterdam and not who we're playing. So we kind of, the coaching staff sent the message and the kids were starting to buy into it after week three. Seven weeks later, six weeks later, you, you find yourself against the same opponent, opponent, Troy, again. This time the tables have turned. You guys are now six and three. Uh, what was different the second time around against Troy? Well, we played a lot better defense. Um, we started out and we played a better first half. Um, we tackled much better. And we tried to contain the running game with Soares uh, killed us the first game. Mm -hmm. And we tried to contain him and make him one-dimensional. And I think we made him throw more than they'd like to. And uh, we'll see it here coming up in just a second. You guys did have a couple of big plays of your own this time around. The score uh, told a much different tale. Um, take me through some of the things that we're seeing here. Well, Brian Stanovich broke off to the right and just made a nice cut and could not be caught after that. And then Trey Holloway, a sophomore, had a great game uh, in the Super Bowl. And he finds uh, Robbie Spagnuolo in the end zone for that one. And then here's our defense stepping mm -hmm. it up, putting a little pressure on him. And Omari Sturdivant makes an unbelievable catch. And then we got people out in front of him in the block, and he takes it to the end zone. So that as was a, a huge play. As a coach, seeing this film, seeing your guys that night, uh, make you a happy coach? Oh, it, very happy. The Super Bowl win. And, you know, just watching Brian run, it's, it's a highlight film every time he touches the ball. It's, 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 for three years, it's been like that. He's a great running back. And uh, now you're on a bye. And you just talked about some of the players, uh, the sophomores stepping up. Um, did you ever see yourself, you know, sitting here getting ready for the state semis when your team was 0-3? Tell you the truth, no. Um, we did not. But, again, we went back, the coaching staff and the players, let's just worry about what we can control and not, you know, who we're going to play next. Let's just get better as a team. And, and the 31 guys that stayed with us bought into it and they committed themselves. You mentioned the guys that stayed with you because there were some that left the program. You see that, that 13 people left and you don't think that it would have the results that you guys have had since then. What is it about this team that was able to overcome that adversity? I think it's the close knit group. You know, we have three sets of brothers on the team. And they're all friends, the 31 guys, and, and they're committed. They were committed. Most of them were committed in the weight room in the off season, and they just continued after those three losses. And we got, you know, some of the kids left the program, like you said, and they just stayed with it and listened to the coaching staff and did a great job. Well, there are three sets of brothers on the team, as you mentioned, and I wanted to know what it was like playing with members of your immediate family. So I asked some of those brothers just what that was like. That's all we do. We play football, video games. We play. That's all we get for Christmas, and, uh, and that's all we do on Sundays, Saturdays, and uh, we just love it. Friday is our day to shine. We get one day a week to have fun, and uh, we just have a great time doing it. Growing up, I didn't really play with him because he was always here having me. Last year was the first year, and this will be the last year, but it's it's fun, you know. No doubt, it helps with chemistry, definitely. And we're we're all brothers. We all treat each other like we're a family, so and that helps because. We are literally brothers. Have you ever been tempted to maybe let somebody slip by you and get a hit on them? I have been, but uh, <laughs> it's my job to protect them. So I just, I know I got to do my job every play to protect them. And I, I feel really bad if I got him hurt by letting somebody go through. He's probably thought about it. He never has because I didn't lose his spot. <laughs> it's all competition. You know, we always want to beat each other up. You know, it's all love, though. From your perspective, what's it like playing with the three sets of brothers? Do you see that there's some, you know, maybe nonverbal communication on the field? They know where they're going to be? I do. I, I see the closeness between them. Um, Keenan has to block for his brother, mm -hmm. Trey, and he's not going to let anybody sack his younger brother. And then um, when we put Dale back together with Brian in the backfield, you know, 
after the seventh week. We should, probably should have done it a little earlier, but uh, Dale blocks for Brian, Brian will block for Dale. It's a nice combination with those two. And then we also have Nico Rangel, a sophomore starting at center, and then his brother, uh, Gio, is a backup linebacker for us. You won a state championship back in 95, again in 2005. So if my math is correct, uh, you guys are due. Are you sick of hearing that yet? You're putting a little pressure on us. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've heard that a lot through the community and you know the coaching staff. It's 2015, so every 10 years, I, I'm hoping it stays like that. But it's, it's going to be a tough task. 14 years of the program, fourth as head coach. What is your style of football? Are these guys playing uh, Doug Edick's style of football right now? Yeah, I would say so. You know, we try to keep it loose mm -hmm. um, and all the way through, have fun. And really, the kids have bought into it. They haven't got uptight. They've always played the underdog role going into the playoffs. And that's been my m motto is to play loose and have fun. And the kids really are enjoying it and enjoying our run that we're on, obviously. What's it going to take to advance in the playoffs here? What are some of the maybe the specific things you've been doing well in recent weeks that you're going to need to continue to do? Defensively, we got to keep stepping it up and be able to, you know, stop the spread if we see Cornwall in a power game against uh, Lady Lord. So our defense has to keep playing well and uh, again get off to a good start and offense control the ball like we've been doing and making big plays. All right. Well, Coach Doug Edick, thank you again so much for joining us. Best of luck next weekend. Well, thank you, Brittany. I appreciate it. She doesn't have a team or a facility, but find out how one high schooler was able to overcome the odds and secure a Division I track and field scholarship. That's next. On